Hi everybody, Dr. Aulist here. In this short video, we're going to talk about the last special sense, and that is the sense of equilibrium. Equilibrium is a fancy word for the process of balancing. And when we talk about balancing, there's two ways that your body has to stay balanced. The first way it has to stay balanced is relative to gravity. So this is what we call static equilibrium. When you're considering the way that you detect static equilibrium, a good way to think about this is what keeps your head up when you're driving. If you start to nod off like this guy here in our picture, your head will jerk itself back up and you'll wake up because you were going forward with gravity. Static equilibrium is also what you feel when you're in an elevator and it jolts up or down and you notice that. The other kind of equilibrium or balance that your body needs to do is in response to rotation. When we talk about rotational equilibrium, this is what we call dynamic equilibrium. Dynamic equilibrium can help you know if your body is actively rotating, but it also lets you know if it's rotating in some direction. So for example, uh, this man's head should have let him know that it was rotating toward the right side onto the shoulder of his unsuspecting uh, flight partner. So dynamic equilibrium, rotational balance, whereas static equilibrium, that's kind of forward and backward balance. The two types of balance involve different specific structures, but kind of we're detecting the information in the same way. So let's talk about them one by one, including the structures and the processes that are involved. When we talk about static equilibrium, I want you to underline highlight star, the parts the saccule and the utricle. The saccule and the utricle are two big membrane sacs that we find in the internal ear. These sacs are used to detect static equilibrium, essentially forward and backwards balance. Inside the saccule and the utricle, we find a membrane called the macula. So the macula is where I actually find my cells that detect static equilibrium. These cells, just like the cells involved in hearing, are called hair cells. Now the hair cells that we have in the macula are not up against things like the tectorial membrane, but what the hair cells in uh, the macula are brushing up against are things called autoliths. I want you to underline, highlight, star, autoliths. Autoliths are little calcium carbonate crystals. They rest on top of the macula, on top of the hair cells. As your head moves forward or backwards, these little autoliths will move as well. And when they move, they put pressure on the hairs on the top of the hair cells ultimately leading us to push open the ion channels that are found on those hairs. Those channels, just like the channels found on our hair cells and hearing, are mechanically gated. Remember that mechanically gated means I get pushed open. So when I'm detecting static equilibrium, forward or backwards balance, I'm using mechanically gated channels that get pushed open or closed by autoliths, by calcium carbonate crystals. So let's look at the process of static equilibrium. Static equilibrium, forward or backwards, the way that you detect what direction your head is going is based on the number of signals that the hair cells in the macula are sending. When your head is upright, the autoliths on top of the macula are sitting right on top of the hair cells. When they sit right on top of the hair cells, some of the mechanically gated channels on those hair cells are opened up. With some of those channels open, we send a slow and steady number of nerve impulses back to the brain, telling the brain that our head is currently upright. If we start to fall asleep in class, if our head starts to bend forward, the autoliths get pulled forward as well. As they're being pulled forward, they're pushing open the mechanically gated channels on the hair cells. And when they push them open, 
This causes the hair cells to send a lot of messages. So when your head tilts forward, we send more messages than normal. When your head tilts backwards, the opposite is actually true. When your head tilts backwards, the autoliths are pulled backwards as well. And as they're pulled backwards, they pull shut those mechanically gated channels on the hairs of the hair cells. We send many fewer messages than we would if our head was upright when we lean backwards. So when we're talking about the process of static equilibrium, thing number one to know, this happens in the saccule and the utricle of the internal ear. Thing number two to know, we're using hair cells that are getting bumped open or closed by autoliths to detect this sensation. And thing number three, we want to know, are we sending a slow and steady number of signals, a really high number of signals, or very few signals when our head is in each position. Make sure you know the rate that our hair cells are sending messages when your head goes forward or backwards or when it's upright. That's static equilibrium. Dynamic equilibrium doesn't use the saccule and the utricle. Dynamic equilibrium uses the three parts of the internal ear that are called the semicircular canals. So the semicircular canals are located kind of up above and toward the side of the saccule and the utricle, which we just talked about. The semicircular canals come in three different orientations, but inside each of these semicircular canals, we have a membrane called the crista. Now, a note that might be good to make for yourself, the crista is a, a semicircular canals version of the macula. We had the macula in the saccule and the utricle. We use this thing called the crista in each of the semicircular canals. Now the crista, this membrane, also has our favorite kind of cell, those hair cells. The hairs are sticking up into a membrane that's called the cupula. And think of the cupula kind of like jello. If you had jello growing up, there was this way you could make it called jello jigglers, where it would jiggle back and forth. It was a lot more solid than regular jello. That's my cupula up here. It's able to jiggle back and forth. What makes it jiggle back and forth is the movement of fluid in the semicircular canals. I want you to underline highlight star that we have endolymph inside the, the semicircular canals. I didn't explicitly say it before, but we should also know that the saccule and the utricle are also filled with endolymph fluid. Any place in the internal ear where I'm detecting sensations, balance sensations or hearing sensations, I'm going to use this endolymph fluid to do it. So when your head is rotating to the left or the right, this endolymph fluid inside the semicircular canal is going to push on the cupula, make it go forward or backwards. We're going to detect that movement because of the movement of the fluid inside the semicircular canals. So the fluid moves, that bends the cupula, and surprise, surprise, more mechanically gated ion channels get pushed open. So remember how I told you we have two different kinds of equilibrium. We use different structures to detect them, but at the end of the day, if we go down to the type of cells that we use and the kind of channels that we use, it's exactly the same. We use those hair cells that are covered in mechanically gated ion channels. So let's look at the process of dynamic equilibrium. In dynamic equilibrium, remember that we're detecting rotational movements. Now, an ice skater spinning is a very extreme uh, way of thinking about a rotational movement. This can be any kind of rotation that your body does. So here's how it goes. 
before you start spinning, when your body is oriented and you're stable, the cupula on top of your hair cells is standing straight upright. When it stands straight upright, we send a few little pings back to the brain, letting the brain know no rotation right now. Then we start spinning. When we start spinning, the fluid inside our, our semicircular canal starts spinning and that pushes on the cupula. As it pushes on the cupula, the hair cells bend and as they bend, they spit out lots and lots of neurotransmitters. So when I'm spinning, lots of messages being sent to the brain. When I stop spinning, it feels like the fluid in my ears is flowing the opposite direction. This is that sensation when you first start stop spinning and you feel really dizzy. It's because all of the sudden we're going from sending a lot of messages to our brain to sending no messages to our brain. We're slamming those mechanically gated channels shut. As we stand still for a little while, as the fluid stops flowing, we'll ultimately end up with that cupula standing upright again. That helps us to know that we've finished that rotational sensation. So just like we saw with static equilibrium, it's all about the number of messages. Are we sending a slow and steady number of messages? Are we sending a bunch of messages? Are we sending no messages? That's how we know what's going on rotationally. And I'll mention, going back to our picture before, remember that your internal ear actually has three different semicircular canals. By having these three different semicircular canals, we're collecting all kinds of different rotational equ equilibrium information. Some of it's detecting a little bit of a rotation to the left, some of it might feel more of a rotation to the right, Every moment of every day, we're collecting rotational information in three different planes or three different fields. Your brain is gonna to add together that information to figure out exactly what's going on with your body. I'm not gonna take time in this recording to go through with you and answer each of these statements, but I wanna make sure you take the time to do this. I've written some statements here that are either describing static equilibrium, dynamic equilibrium, or both kinds of equilibrium. Work through your notes to see if you can identify which of these statements is, is applied to each type of equilibrium. This kind of compare and contrast, I can promise you, is going to be on the quiz in the exam. One last note about special senses as we wrap it up. Just like we've talked about with each of the other special senses, I want us to make sure we know the cranial nerves and brain regions that balance sensations are sent to. So the cranial nerve that's involved in static and dynamic equilibrium is again cranial nerve number eight, the vestibulocochlear nerve. Remember that, that the vestibulocochlear nerve also helped us with the process of hearing the branches that came off of the cochlea were my hearing branches. The vestibular branches are the ones that are coming off of the semicircular canals and off of the saccule and the utricle. Those are the ones that are collecting that balance information. Balance isn't processed quite the same way that our other special senses are. If you notice when we talk about where this information is going, some of it is going to go into the cerebral cortex where we, we do some balancing. But a lot of it is gonna to go to places like your spinal cord. Some of it's gonna to go to the cerebellum or the brain stem. Balance is something that we involves a lot of different parts of your body, a lot of different skeletal muscles to keep you upright and in the correct position. So unlike some of our other taste or smell sensations, there's not just one place in the cerebral cortex we send this, we send this information all over the place.